In this video, I want to show you how you can leverage ship constructor data uh, to create a simulation of your build sequence uh, using Autodesk and Navisworks. Uh, so to do so, there's uh, several steps that you'll have to, um, uh, to do to accomplish your task. Uh, the first is to create a selection set uh, from the product hierarchy information contained in the ship constructor uh, product data model, uh, as well as you'll have to create an MS project file um, and as well the last file you'll have to create is a, either an NWD or an NWF file. I'm going to show you how you can create this selection set in, in the MS project file from the information in Ship Constructor but I'm not going to go through the steps on how to create the NWD or NWF uh, assuming that you uh, know how to create uh, those type of files. And then the last step I'll uh, be discussing is how you can use, use all this information and create a simulation of your build sequence in uh, Navisworks. Uh, so the setup initially is um, a, a little bit of work, being about five to, five to eight minutes uh, worth of work. Uh, but after that, updating uh, your model as well as your uh, build sequence is uh, a lot, uh, lot easier. So the first step is um, in, you have to open up Ship Constructor, open up a project, and um, you'll want to go to uh, the Advantage Pack tab. And in this Advantage Pack tab, uh, you have ser uh, several commands. Uh, with the main one I'm going to be focusing on is the Product Hierarchy Export. It has these two main uh, commands that uh, will generate the files that we need. Uh, so as you can see, I have my Product Hierarchy open in this project. Uh, it has a few assemblies and um, my build sequence for this project. Uh, so the first command I'm going to call is to export uh, the Navisworks selection set. Uh, so if I select uh, this command, it's going to ask me the product hierarchy which I want to export. Um, this is assuming that using you can use any product hierarchy to define your build sequence. In this case, I'm using the primary, so I'll uh, uh, accept the primary um, option. Uh, then it asks me to where I want to save the file. I'm just going to save the file in the location it suggests. And this usually just takes a few seconds to create the selection set um, information that uh, needs to be imported into Navisworks. So once it's complete, the next step is to create a MS project file. And one of the options that it gives me here is to create a de default schedule or not. Um, depending on uh, what you're trying to accomplish, um, and if you have your information already contained in the product hierarchy, uh, which is your, your sequence or your schedule and um, being with dates uh, you can say no but in this case I don't have any dates and the reason why I would want to create a default schedule is so that when I do my simulation in uh, Navisworks it has some time of it's some time scale so it can actually do a simulation on time uh, so the default uh, will just create um, a one day process for absolutely every assembly that you have so not typically uh, realistic but at least gives you uh, a way to simulate this information, visually see your build sequence in, in Navisworks. So the dates won't be correct, uh, but the simulation will be correct. So I'm going to say uh, yes to create the default uh, schedule because I don't have the information uh, contained in this project uh, at this moment. And then it also asks me what product hierarchy I want to uh, export. And again, I have my build sequence in the pr primary product hierarchy, so therefore I'm going to select my primary product hierarchy. Uh, then it's going to ask me to uh, save my file. I select the same directory that I uh, selected for my selection set. And this can take um, anywhere from 30 seconds to anywhere about 5 minutes, depending on uh, the size of the project and how many uh, assembly sequences or assembly stages you have uh, for your project. So after it's uh, created my MS project file, uh, I'm going to look at the directory that uh, contains these two files. So as you can see, I created my XML file for my selection set, as well as my product hierarchy MS project file. So I'm going to open my MS project file uh, for several reasons. Um, the first is that you can kind of see that um, it 
reflects the same product hierarchy as uh, the assembly um, assembly structure in the uh, strip constructor. So if we can kind of start looking at how this structure looks very similar to my ship constructor project. Uh, what I'm going to do here um, first is to remove unit one, uh, mainly because the simulation that I want to do is just going to be really focused on unit two. And if you start having too many assemblies, you start getting a lot of noise. Uh, so you really want to concentrate your assembly sequence on a particular area of the project that you're concentrating on. Uh, my default settings for MS Project for no particular reason is to create these default uh, tasks as uh, manually. So I want to uh, select them all and uh, choose auto scheduling. And what you can do, you can see that it actually changed my scheduling of my tasks uh, correctly. So if I go and save this project, close it, and then open up my uh, Navisworks model. Uh, so this is my Navisworks model, which is just the representation of my uh, ship constructor project. Again, there's various ways of creating this, um, which I'm not going to get into. Uh, so if you open up the project, uh, the very first thing to do is to open and import uh, the search selection sets, which uh, was created from Ship Constructor. Uh, so if you select that file and open it, uh, you can see that it creates uh, search selection sets uh, of absolutely all the assemblies in the product hierarchy that you've uh, exported. Uh, the next step is to import uh, the MS project or the yeah the MS project file, and you do this by uh, going to data sources and then selecting MS project file uh, to 2007 to 2013. As you can see, there's many different other formats that are, can be imported. Uh, so if you are not using MS project file and you already have a Primavera project that you want to use, and keeping that maintained by your project planning, you're more than welcome and are capable of using that as well. So if I open up uh, the file that was exported in the previous step, it will be imported into this project, but nothing has really been imported. If I look at the tasks, there's no new tasks that were created. Uh, and to, in, to actually import the tasks that are in the schedule of the MS project file, I'll have to right click and then go to rebuild task hierarchy. Uh, this will only take a moment. And what it does now is it actually now creates all the tasks in Navisworks. And as you can see, it actually brought in the schedule. The next step is to change the task type to be uh, construct. And this is really needed for, uh, for a property of uh, the simulation. Uh, so if we select them all and fill down the construct property. Now the next step is to associate all these tasks with the selection sets uh, so that they know what parts are included in these tasks. And you can do this automatically uh, using the auto attach using rules. And the rule that we're using is to associate the tasks with the selection sets. Uh, so if we go apply rules, it will associate all these tasks to these selection sets. And at this time, my configuration of my for my simulation is complete. If I want to do a little bit more options of uh, changing my colors and appearance of my simulation, I can do it here. Uh, but for this uh, video, I will not. So if you go to this uh, simulate tab and you click play, you can see that it starts um, using my assembly sequence to for the model and constru constructing the model. And I can pause it any time. I can use all the navigation tools uh, that are available in Navisworks to simulate as it's being built. And you have options to uh, pause it and to rewind it and to go step by step. Uh, there's more settings here if you want to uh, reduce the scale and um, how many steps or how many uh, assembly sequences are going to happen per step.
So the next question that really comes into effect is, so what happens when my product model changes uh, or my assembly sequence change? Uh, well, if your product model changes, uh, depending on how you create your Navisworks model, your Navisworks model will get created or updated automatically. Uh, so if you're using NWCs, uh, if you open up Navisworks, uh, your model automatically gets updated. If your build sequence gets changed or if you're updating your um, MS project file, all you would have to do is go to your data source tab and then this is where we used to add the um, data source, but in this case we just have to click the data source that we have and say rebuild uh, task hierarchy. So it'll in import all the new tasks as well as uh, sync the tasks with the selection sets, sets and so forth. And I hope this uh, video was informative and uh, gives you the, uh, the knowledge to be able to create and leverage ship instructor data uh, to create simulations in AutoCAD or, or Autodesk Navisworks.